Hey everybody, Roy Isaac here from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. You're watching TJV Trucker Josh on YouTube. Good morning, everybody. Just enjoying my sausage and egg croissant. What happened? I don't know. Diesel. Diesel, you want some egg? One second, buddy. Want some egg? There you go. Good for you. Good boy. Lucky you. What I was trying to say is I'm enjoying my sausage and egg croissant. This is delicious. We're at the truck stop, the Cenex here, uh, just outside of uh, Wausau, Wisconsin. Oh yeah. Mmm. Mmm. This is my best friend right now. Give me a minute. That was utterly delicious, as they say. I still haven't figured out who they are, but they sure talk a lot. They say a lot. So, uh, oh, done my prey trip. Everything's looking good. All the tires are filled with air. All the brakes work. All the lights work. Trailer is connected. I'm just gonna make double sure right now. We're gonna move forward a little bit. We're gonna put it in gear first, because that always helps. And pull the trailer brake. And the trailer is not going to fall off. Now, nope. we're good. They engage properly. They release properly. All my signals work. My e-log is up to date. I'm awake. My seatbelt's on. Diesel's good to go. Got my coffee. Ate my breakfast. Wipers work. Fantastic. And hey, before we go, I want to show you this. Here, let me take you out of here. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, guys. That bug deflector is actually, I, I think it's doing quite a good job. I've been looking at other people's windshields who don't have bug deflectors around here and they have tons more bugs on their windshield than I do. And you can sort of see how the bugs only start like here now. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's almost like a fine line. Like it doesn't cover the whole windshield, but right where my camera is anyways, it definitely does help keep bugs out of your face. So that's one of the reasons I got it. I got it first of all, cause it looks cool. Looks awesome but also because I wanted to keep bugs out of the way of my camera because they always hit right in front of the camera. Now it sort of gets shot up over the camera, so that's good. Less bugs for you guys to stare at. You're welcome. Let's get out of here. And the e-log kicks me into driving. All right, we are officially on our 14 hour day. Well, technically we were when I started my pre-trip, but that I can mess around with. The, the, the driving part of my day, I cannot mess around with. Once my wheels roll, I cannot take that back. No take backsies. It's kind of foggy out this morning, eh? Wisconsin, what you doing? Why are you hiding? See, on a day like today, I can understand when people turn on their fog lights, you know, because there's there, there's fog around. There's fog out today. So many times people have these bright HID fog lights on on like the clearest of nights. I don't know, I guess they think they look cool. I don't know. I don't know. When I was a kid, I used to do that too. Then I realized that it was unnecessary. Anyway, let's get on here.
all checked in in the back here. Now I gotta get these tarps off as fast as possible so they can unload me. And just like that, before I could even finish rolling up my straps, they had me all empty. So I've got my tarps tied down all the way to the back here. I'm not gonna need them for my next load. So I'll just transfer them onto the next trailer because my next load is already preloaded. It's waiting for me. So all I gotta do is go there, throw those tarps on that trailer, tie them down, tie that load down. Let's hope that it's a simple load and not too intricate. Some of the steel loads are real easy. They're just like straight beams, all the same size, right? And others are all kinds of mismatched pieces with some little pieces thrown in the middle and all kinds of low gauge steel that can bend easily. Uh, we won't know until we get there. So let's, let's get her done, as they say. A little bit later. So that's my load. Easy enough. They got the ropes hanging through on the center beams there just so I can pull straps through underneath that top piece, strap the lower part down, then strap the top piece down on top of everything else. This shouldn't take too long. This is a nice load. Apparently they got me crossing at Emerson, Manitoba though, which is an hour further around than going through North Portal. So I sent them a message to see if they can get that changed. Uh, if not, then we'll, we'll go through Emerson. But I'll be going straight there. Two and a half day drive with this up to Camrose, Alberta. Somebody up there in Alberta needs some good old Wisconsin steel. Well, butter my butt and call me a biscuit. My delivery appointment time got changed on me. I'm actually okay with it this time. We were gonna be in a little bit of a rush, like I said, it's two and a half days of driving to get up to Alberta, and we had pretty much exactly two and a half days to get there, which could easily be done, but you know, it would be a little rushed. My delivery appointment time now just got changed to Tuesday at 8.30, so we have a whole other 24 hours. So we don't wanna drag our feet too badly, but uh, we don't have to rush so much. So that's a good thing. So that's why they wanted me to cross through at Emerson and not at North Portal. I see, I see. I might even be able to go home. That's probably why they did that for me, just in case I wanted to go home. I don't know if I'll have time for that yet, but uh, I might, you know, if you think about it. I don't know, I don't know yet, but uh, my delivery appointment time got changed to Tuesday now anyway, so we'll deliver Tuesday morning, get a reload Tuesday afternoon, be home Wednesday evening, truck will go in the shop Thursday, and hopefully I can leave Friday or Saturday on a new trip again. Hmm, all right. Well, that's that. I'm gonna go tie my load down now. I have to be all dressed up with these fancy sleeves and everything here, because you know, this fabric will save my arm from getting cut by steel. It's a steel retardant fabric. Can't get out of my truck without having my good cloth steel protectors on my arms. Wouldn't want my arms getting cut. I don't know how this is gonna stop steel, but hey, it's their policy. It's their policy, right, whatever. They make the rules, I just show up and pick up my freight. So while I'm here on their property, I have to follow their rules. Sort of like when I come to visit the US, when I'm in their territory and on their land, I have to follow their rules. When I go back to Canada, I'm free again, right? No, not quite, I have a couple more a couple more rules up there. Though, as a truck driver, I have more freedoms in Canada. Isn't that interesting? There's more freedoms, and I can get further and haul more weight and make more money trucking in Canada than I would be able to if I just did trucking in the US. So I guess there's good points to both countries. I like them both. They're both awesome. Canada has treated me well. Gotta throw another strap over this here yet, but I'm almost done throwing straps over this yet. I just got to tighten them all. I've thrown another couple over the back, but I wanted to show you how this works. Uh, you see they got ropes that they leave on here for you. You tie your strap to it, right? And I've already tied the strap to it over there. You see it? There's the rope. 
and it's tied to the strap just like that. So, uh, so all I gotta do is I pull this and you see it's gonna come all the way up and through here. And around here, it's supposed to anyway. Come on, come on girl. Get over here. I don't know why it's a girl, but hey, there you are. See, now I got a strap through here. Underneath that top piece there, see that? So I always put my straps on this load as close to the dunnage as possible because you want all of the pressure of the strap and all of the, the weight load from the strap on the dunnage, right? So I put the one over the top, just on this side of the dunnage, the one's going through there, I'm gonna move that one right against the dunnage there so that all the pressure is just pushing all the way down that whole system. Let's try another one. I hooked this one up over there too. You can see that it's connected. See the rope over there? There goes the strap. And now you just give her a good pull. It's a bit of a longer rope. Grab it again, pull it again, and there it is. And you got a strap going through there. They do this because uh, we're not allowed to get on the trailer at all here. Like I'm not even allowed to stand on the trailer deck. If they see me doing that, I get in trouble. And if I keep doing it, then eventually they kick me out of here and I can't come back. And uh, I lose all of the pretty zeros and numbers that are attached to these loads. So just got to do what they ask, I guess. So I'm going to continue getting these straps over this. I'm going to tighten those straps and then we're going to continue on down meandering our way towards up towards Alberta got lots of time to get there now oh I haven't even connected my trailer yet <laughs> I was just gonna say all right let's go and release the trailer brakes now that wouldn't have worked the trailer's not even connected yet shoot and I got all changed already well I'm just gonna quickly go out there connect the connect the airlines and rush back in we gotta get going. Uh, everything's tied down now. We got a long time to get there, a lot of time to get there, and uh, yeah, nothing else to say. Let's get back on the road. And off we go on another adventure. These are look, cows. See that? Two cows. Or was there more? There might have been more, man. You might have been hiding in your bushes. <laughs> I know. No, we can't turn around. We can't turn around. We can't turn around. Where do you think I can turn around right here? I don't know. You want to go say hi? No, we can, not those ones, okay? Next time. There's nowhere to park here, buddy. Lots of traffic out here. We're just south of Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, we're going to go up north of Madison to the first pilot flying J grab us some fuels because I'm at a quarter tank here and uh, we'll see how far we'll get today I have five and a half hours available to me on my whole day my whole clock I have to stop before then that'll bring us up to it's four o'clock right now so four five six seven eight nine nine thirty I gotta count on my fingers still because I'm still like ten years old nine thirty we have to stop for sure before then so uh, I don't I could go to Black River Falls I guess I could go a little further I'll go a little further in Black River Falls. What's tomorrow? Saturday? I could go home tomorrow night, maybe. Saturday night, Sunday, Monday. Yeah, I guess I could. I could go home, sleep in Sunday, and leave Sunday afternoon. Yeah, well, we'll see. Eh? I haven't quite decided. I'm all, I'm all confused now because my schedule got changed. <laughs> Just coming up to Madison here, I think. Karen's about to tell me that we got a turn soon. Yeah, this is Madison. Suburbs of Madison, you might call it. I don't know. In one kilometer, keep to the right on US 12, US 14, US 18, US 151 South and then slight right in 140 meters. What? Turn right on what? Karen, that's a mouthful. You've had too much coffee, you need to calm down. 600 meters, keep to the right on US 12, US 14, US 18, US 151 South and then slight right at 140 meters. Wow, that's impressive. This is four highways in one. US Highway 12, 14, 151 and 18. 
<laughs> We're gonna turn right, right here, right? This is it. You're dinging at me because you want me to turn, right? Okay. Now what? Right. She said slight right. That's right. 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 Now what? Now what do I do, Karen? Karen. What do I do now? Green lights. Oh, traffic. Lovely. This is exactly what I was hoping for. I was just thinking to myself, man, I hope I get caught in crazy Madison rush hour traffic. That would make my day. And what do you know? My lucky day. This car trying to cut in front of me like I'm going to try and cut in front of him. <laughs> Use your signal, buddy, if you're changing lanes. Continue huh? on this road for nine kilometers. Okay, okay. Oh, I got to get out of this lane, too. Oh, fantastic. Hey, buddy, would you want to let me in front of you? Are you a kind soul? Are you a good person? I have my signal on. I'm just going to hover around here and see what you do. Hover around here. Are you gonna, are you gonna let me in? You're gonna let me in because you're a good man. You're a good man. Thanks, buddy. Give you the little flash ruse to say thank you. There you go. Look at how many people there are. I didn't even know there's this many people in Madison. Apparently, it's a big city. Beautiful sunset right behind the pumps. We must have just missed it. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, Wisconsin here somewhere. Where are we? Where are we? Somebody tell me. One second. Bear with me. Just stare at those beautiful pumps for a second. We are uh, Mauston, Wisconsin. At the Pilot Travel Center. Just stop here for a shower and fuel. And uh, yeah, we're ready to head on down the road. We got two hours and 51 minutes available yet. Let's see how far we can get to. Drive a little bit into the night and get a good rest tonight. We don't have to get going really quickly tomorrow or anything. I checked my load while we were here. Everything is right where it should be and hasn't moved. Oh dear, oh dear. I kind of hit that bump the wrong way there. All right. So how far do you guys think I'm gonna make it? I'm on I-94 westbound, starting in Mauston. I'd say about two and a half hours. Oh, there's a big bump right here. Big bump, big bump, big bump. Oh, ah! Oh, there it is. Oh, glad I saw that. Didn't nail it. Oh boy, they gotta get that fixed. I bet you some guys don't pay attention and they just nail that. Alright, we are uh, in Menominee, Wisconsin, pulling into the quick trip. That's where I'm going to spend the night. I have 16 minutes left on my clock. You have arrived at your destination. On the right side, quick trip number 603. Number 603. Whoa, 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 this is the you entrance there, my friend. 14 minutes of remaining drive time. All right, guys, I'm gonna find a parking spot and I'll talk to you in a bit. Hey, everybody. Roy Isaac here from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. You're watching TJV Trucker Josh on YouTube. <laughs> 